Hi, welcome to TechCrunch Disrupt Backstage. I am here with Paul Graham. And Paul, I'm sorry, you have to come down from Charlie Rose to Sarah Lacey. You're downgrading. The rate we're going, a homeless man outside is going to be interviewing you next. <laughs> I bet I know what he'll say. <laughs> so, oh, top line The stats. same thing founders say to me. What, what would that be? Do you have any money? I want money. <laughs> Right. Could you assess his determination? Yeah. I thought that was one of the most interesting things you said in sort of the uh, the different qualities that you look for in a great entrepreneur. Determination is the one that can fool you. Well, yeah, and also the most important, unfortunately, the most important quality is the hardest is the the hardest one to judge in a short time. Yeah. You can tell we can tell after a week or two, but 10 minutes is just not enough. So I was, yeah, I was going to ask, is it that it changes? Is it that entrepreneurs don't really know what they're getting into sometimes when they're building a company and then they get into it and think, you know, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs who think we're going to take this all the way, have big ambitions, year or two down the line, they just want to sell. Sometimes does it change? People's determination does change. Some people discover some kind of inner Bill Gates, you know, that they didn't know was there. Mm -hmm. And other people maybe have always like we're the kind of people who've always gotten a's in things and thought they were determined but never tried anything that hard yeah you know? yeah it's like the harvard syndrome where everyone was the valedictorian and then they go there and everyone else is yeah. as smart as them and they kind of it's kind of like that at yc it's kind of like that people think they're determined and then they see other founders who are even more determined but that's good because i think i think it encourages them to be a, a bit more formidable themselves. You know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The other thing you talked about was flexibility. Now, I'm curious to hear a little bit more on this because on the one hand, you want startups who are flexible and open to suggestion. No one knows everything. It takes a lot of people. They yeah. need mentorship. On the other hand, some of the best entrepreneurs I've known are those ones who have such a strong like inner compass and they know what they want and they know the company they're going to build and they're not going to get swayed. I remember in the early days of Facebook, so many people giving Mark Zuckerberg advice of, no, it means how long, you need to have more people on the site and more page views, not coming back to the page every day for ads. And you know, there were so many things like that that people told him that he just refused to listen to and people thought he was a stubborn kid. Would you have called him inflexible? How do you know the difference? No, he does not seem to be inflexible, right? <laughs> I mean, his, their motto is like, move fast and break stuff, right? Right. That's a very empirical way of approaching the world. Um, I think the way to tell whether the right kind of flexibility is to have high variation in flexibility. Mm -hmm. Some things, when you're sure of something, genuinely sure, not just like treating it as some you know religious truth, uh, then you should be determined. You should stick to that, right? And other things, you should you should you know be willing to change, and, and you should know which ones, uh huh, right? which ones to stick with, and which ones you should be willing to change about, right? right? So like, at Y Combinator, just to use Y Combinator as an example, one of the things, one of the we we have to have like some simple rules to guide us when we're funding so many startups, mm -hmm. and so. One of our rules is, if we're not sure what to do, do whatever is in the interest of the founders. And it sounds like some kind of marketing claim to say that, but I right. swear, the reason we do this is not because we're nice guys. We're not just because of that. Right. It's because that's the only way to do things on such a scale. Mm -hmm. It's hard to have ulterior motives right. for 313 <laughs> different startups, right? So if we're not sure what to do, just like whatever the founder wants, that's cool, right? Right. Um, and right. so we absolutely stick to that. But then things like like how fast are we going to grow and what are we going to do to do it? Totally like decided on the fly. I have no idea what Y Combinator will look like even one year from now. I have what? no idea. We just decide on the fly. And you have your biggest class ever. Is it's, there? It's a almost concern? always the biggest class ever. Is there a concern at some point? 60 is too much. Is 70 too much? Is Every time much? we're worried, it's going to turn out to be too much. So you're just gonna and keep so pushing far, it? well, that's. I mean, that sounds very irresponsible, but that is actually the way people scale software. Mm -hmm. The way you scale software is you crank up the, the rates and then you just see what breaks and then you fix that bottleneck and then you crank it up some more and then you hit another bottleneck, right? right. And you never know when you're gonna hit a bottleneck that's the last bottleneck that you really can't fix. But if you've done a lot of scaling software, <coughs> you know there's, it, it, you'd be, you're always surprised how many times you can fix bottlenecks and increase the number you know, another 2x. 
Now we had an interesting debate yesterday with Ron Conway and David Lee. They had done some um, some some statistics looking at great startups and what makes yeah. the great entrepreneurs the ones. Yeah, who I heard about this. I want to read about this. Yeah, well, you can read. I was my on a plane. TechCrunch. Uh, but but there's there was a core tension in their argument because they found that um, repeat entrepreneurs do disproportionately better, but very young entrepreneurs do disproportionately better. So there's this question of, okay, well, how does a kid who's in his early 20s have the time to have been a repeat entrepreneur? Um, you mentioned on stage with Charlie that you weren't totally sold that under 30 were made the best entrepreneurs. So I'm curious how you would sort of rationalize those two. Well, remember what Ron Conway is talking about is not the performance of like 20 year old founders. He's talking about the performance of 20 year old founders who managed to get an investment from Ron Conway, right? You have to be a pretty unusual 20 year old to do that. So it's, and whereas someone who is 30 might be able, to, could be more intrinsically mediocre, and yet because they're better at presenting themselves, mm -hmm. right, be better at raising money. Mm -hmm. And so, He's not talking about the pool of 20-year-olds versus 30-year-olds. It's 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds who get money from him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't be surprised if a 20-year-old who can get money out of Ron Conway so is pretty formidable. they're by definition above the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it could be that he's simply measuring that. Uh-huh. So last question really quickly. You mentioned it's easier for startups to get started now than, than before when you guys started Y Combinator. I don't think anyone would argue with that. Yeah. A lot of investors blame you guys for that. They say you're part of the, the people who made it so easy, particularly with this Yuri-Ron partnership. What's wrong with it being easy to start startups? They should be happy. There's more deal <laughs> flow, right? That's what investors want. If there's more startups, there's more for them to choose from. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's all the time we have. Paul, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And ha I hope you get some sleep, you poor jet-lagged guy. Yeah. <laughs>